The Giants are not a serious franchise, bro. They are an unserious team. I'm giving this to y'all like straight, bro. Right after the game, I just ended my stream. No editing, no music, no nothing. Just straight video, pure, pure pain, bro. Pure energy. Just pure pain. This was a terrible game. This was like a collapse of epic proportions. Can you even call it a collapse? I mean, I guess you can because we had to lead 7-3 to three at one point. But this was a game where we lost on all three sides of the ball. Offense, defense, special teams. And you guys know how I feel about the special teams. Because we, we really emphasized the Giants, man. They super emphasized with the cuts that they were making to the end of the roster to take guys that can play special teams. And it was, it was what, below average? One of the things that really comes to mind is beginning of the game, they had a chance to stop a punt from going through the backfield, and whoever was there just let it go right through the end zone. But you know what? That's the small thing. That's the small thing. The, <laughs> the bigger thing, the much, much bigger thing, was this defense. This defense was bad. I'm... I feel so terrible saying this, but this is shades of 2017. In, in terms of the reason the defense was bad was because they got gassed out. They got super gassed out. That drive at the end of the second quarter, the Broncos had two really, really big drives that just completely ate up clock. There was one at the end of the second quarter where they scored. Um, and they had back-to-back -back ones, actually, I think, in, at the end of the second quarter. Regardless, they had one right before the half where they took the lead. Um, and that was like a two-minute drive, and then they had the one that took up like half of the third quarter, and those were back-to-back. -back. The defense was on the field for basically like 15 minutes, bro, basically an entire quarter. They got completely gassed. The offense, and, and I'll get back to the defense, because there's a lot, you know, no, 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 I'm sticking with the defense. We couldn't tackle for anything. Even from the beginning of the game, for some reason, the Giants players couldn't tackle, whether it was the guy on the end of the roster or our star linebacker and Blake Martinez. They could not tackle to save their life. I don't know why. We couldn't get pressure. Um, actually, no, I'm going to take that back. We did get pressure. We got a good amount of pressure up the middle. Dexter Lawrence impressed me. Leonard Williams got his sack. Dexter Lawrence was being held all the time. They didn't call it. Fine, I don't care. That's not even what lost us the game. It's the fact that, you know, exterior, we couldn't get pressure. And I'm part of me is fine with that because we were expecting that. We know the edge is a weakness. But then our secondary couldn't do what they did last year, and that's make up for that despite that fact almost every receiver on the Broncos today exposed our secondary in some way Colonel Sutton didn't get involved until a little bit later but he had a couple big catches especially in that end of the half drive that got them the touchdown KJ Hamler every time he was on the field burnt us if he caught that touchdown throw where he completely burnt Dory Jackson the score would be 34 to 7 you know what I'm saying or 34 to 14 because Daniel got the late run in touchdown I really doesn't matter it would have been worse than it actually is right now um uh, Tim Patrick even got a couple catches on us. That should, really shouldn't have happened if this defense played like it did last year. And, and Jerry Judy, um, you know what I'm saying? Prayers up to him. Uh, if he stayed in the game, he probably would have had a monster game. Melvin Gordon ran for a 70-yard touchdown on us. And I know it was towards the end of the game in the fourth quarter, but it was a reflection of how the entire game was going on the defensive side of the ball. They got gassed out, and even before they were gassed out, I don't know if it's rusty or what, they look bad. They couldn't cover, they couldn't tackle, and the only pressure they were getting was from the inside. The defense was terrible. The defense is a big, big, big part of why we lost this game. Teddy Bridgewater looked like an elite quarterback against us. You know what I'm saying? And Teddy Bridgewater did a great job of, at first, being a game manager in the first half. And then he, it's almost like he, I don't know, he was still a game manager in the second half, but he was like slicing and dicing us, cutting us up like an expert chef in the room. I'm so disappointed in this defense. I, I, and as much as I'm disappointed in the defense, I'm s just as much disappointed in the offense. Because once again, they were bad before they got gassed out. They were. Let's call it what it was. They were, they were performing really bad before they got gassed out. Then they got gassed out and it went to them performing horrendously. Now on the offensive side of the ball, it seems like after that Sterling Shepard touchdown, nothing could go right. And I'm going to tell you this. Even during that Sterling Shepard touchdown, we were only targeting him and seeing Darius Slayton can't catch. Two drops this game that I counted. Maybe there was more. Kyle Rudolph. Pfft, Kyle Rudolph looks bad. Kyle Rudolph looked bad. He couldn't catch either. He's too slow. His brakes were slow. His route running was not there. Kyle Rudolph looked bad. 
Saquon looked scared. I know he was on a pitch count, so, you know, maybe I'll take some heat off of him. But when he wasn't there, he looked like he was running scared. You know what I'm saying? It looks like mentally he's not completely back yet. But for week one, Saquon, I just on a pitch count, I, I don't know. I don't know what I expected, to be real. I mean, actually, no, I do know what I expected. So I set myself up for failure by saying he was going to have that incredible comeback season. Um, but even as a regular running back, he just looked scared. It looks like he didn't want to run unless there was protection in front of him. He was making a couple of cuts that were Saquon-esque, but for the most part, you know, he was a non-factor during the game. I think he had a drop as well. There was a lot of drops around here. There was a lot of drops. The offensive line, believe it or not, was a bright spot for me. It's incredible. The offensive line plays, I think they were an average line today. I think we only let up, what, two sacks? I'm fine with that. For the most part, the protection was okay. They were at best an average line, right? But they weren't horrendous. They weren't terrible. And that's hilarious because while the offensive line wasn't terrible, every other part of the team was terrible. The passing game was terrible. I still can't stand Jason Garrett. And yes, we didn't have much of a chance for the offense to be on the field. But when they were there, we didn't use Kenny Galladay until the fourth quarter. That's not good play calling. He's your number one wide receiver. He's one of the best 50-50 contested catch wide receivers in the entire league. One of the best big body guys in the league. He can get separation and we know that he could beat off Kyle Fuller. And he, they don't really use him until the fourth quarter. Before the fourth quarter, he had one reception for 17 yards, I think. And then they start using him and he's making these highlight catches and the game is way out of reach. The, the, the drive that continues to come back in my mind is when Logan Ryan got that fumble recovery turnover. And that's really where the entire thing, the momentum shifted. We should have had a better drive than we had. We had a three and out and that was it. On the second down play, we should have ran the ball again. On the third down play, I think we, it was a check down pass that Daniel did. I don't know if it's Garrett. I don't know if it's him. Both of them had, well, Garrett had a bad game for me. Daniel had an up and down game. You could say it's a bad game. But why not put Gaudet on some type of vertical route that goes past the yard marker and give him a chance to go up and get it. That's where you signed him for. Why did we sign this man $20 million just to be targeted like five times in one game, bro? He's our number one receiver. And at first, at first, I thought maybe he's on a pitch count as well. But given how they used him a lot towards the end of the game where they were really targeting him, that idea went out of my mind. It was just like, what was going on before? Sterling Shepard had a good game. He had a great game, in fact. But we should have used Galladay more, and I put that on Garrett. I, the route combinations got a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? We saw a little bit something different than we did last year, but it was still looks so similar to that offense from last year, man. Getting back to the offensive line, once again, they looked, they looked okay. It almost seemed as if they took a step back in run blocking. Maybe I'm imagining that to take a step forward in pass blocking. I don't know. But it's hilarious that when the offensive line takes a step forward, the rest of the team take a step back. And now, of course, I'm getting to Daniel Jones. Daniel, for the longest part in this game, was the best part of the Giants, other than Logan Ryan. And then he has that drive where it looks like he's driving us back down for a comeback, for, you know, to take the league, to tie the game up, and he fumbles the football. This is so reminiscent of the past two years, especially last year, when you look at games like the Rams, the Cowboys, where he has his chance to have his breakout moments to drive down the field and get us back in the game or win the game and then he has a turnover last year against the Rams turnover it was an interception I think against the Cowboys it was an interception as well against the Bears it was an interception albeit there was a call you know a penalty that should have been called but still he's not he can't sustain drives it seems to continue to be the problem one of the problems I really had with him this game before the fumble like let's forget about that for a second before the fumble I noticed that he was still staring down his receivers and I don't like that. That was a problem that was there at the beginning of last year. It disappeared as the year went on. So I thought, okay, we're done with that. He's not going to do it anymore. This game, he was really staring down a lot of his receivers. There was a good amount of throws that should have been picked off that the Denver defense just dropped or just didn't get their hand around properly. And they, the reason that they got there in the first place was because he was staring down his receivers. For example, the first sack... The right side of the line got beaten 100%, but he could have ran out of there, but he didn't because he was so laser focused on whoever was on the left side of the field. But Daniel, once again, he was like the only bright spot on offense for majority of the game until that fumble. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's literally the story as it is with Daniel Jones. He has good drives. He continues to show good potential, but he's not consistent enough and he can't sustain them. There's always something that goes wrong for some reason. You know what I'm saying? And 
once again, was he the final nail in the coffin? Was that fumble like the final nail in the coffin? I think I'd say so. You could argue it was the Melvin Gordon touchdown. But I think that fumble was what really put the game away. But what got us to putting the game away was the defense. You know what I'm saying? There's like three big culprits here. I think the biggest culprit is the defense. They were bad before they got gassed out, like I said. They couldn't tackle. They couldn't cover. And then they got gassed out, and we all know what happens. Like I said, Shades of 2017. When that defense got gassed out, it was terrible. Our defense got gassed out. It was terrible. Second biggest culprit for me, Jason Garrett. Why are you only using Kenny Galladay when it doesn't matter? Why weren't you using him earlier in the game? Earlier in the game, we were targeting like only Shepard. You know what I'm saying? Dennis Daniel. Then I could put everybody that dropped passes because it's Shades of 2020 now. It's... I don't know what to say, man. I'm so disappointed. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm just... This is what it is to root for the Giants, man. I mean... It was way worse than I expected, but not for the reasons that I expected. It was way worse because the defense looked worse. It was way worse because my biggest concern is in the O-line. It's the least of my concerns. But that's just it. This ain't no recap video. This is just pure reaction video from a Giants fan. This is just my thoughts. If you disagree, fine. If you agree, fine. Put them down below. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.